In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, we're, uh, I think, beginning a new series today. Not that we exhausted the other one, but um, I, I, as we go, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I believe the one that we've been on about the spirit of man flows into this, and uh, we'll see. I'm believing for utterance and direction. This is a very big subject. And uh, we, we just prayed. Are you believing with me? Yes. Thank you. Ephesians 4. Did you find it? Yes, sir. And uh, verse. Let's see. 24. It says. That you put on the new man. Well, the new man is the one we've been talking about, the inner man, the one that was recreated when you're born again. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Would you need to write to Christians and tell them to quit lying? These are, these are people at the church of Ephesus. So yeah, the Spirit of God told Christians to stop lying. Verse 26, be angry and sin not and let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Now that verse is the one I want to emphasize right now. Neither give place to the devil. Now there is a, it's a short verse. What, just uh, six words or so. But there is so much light here. For one thing, there must be a devil. Right? Right? And another thing, he must not be able to just take place. Right? And another thing, if he has place, somebody gave it to him. Can you see that? And you don't have to give the devil any place. The Lord charged us, the Spirit of God through Paul here, don't. Another way of saying instead of neither can also be translated not. Give not place. We might say today, don't give any place. Neither give place. Don't give place to the devil. Say it out loud, don't give place to the devil. Let's say it again. Don't give place to the devil. Another time, don't give place to the devil. Who's the understood subject? You. You are not to give place to the devil. Let me read this to you from the Amplified. The Amplified, verse 27. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. The word place is also translated in the King James, room. Room, space, room, and that also means, uh, you know, opportunity. The enemy, th this is one of the greatest truths you'll ever hear. The enemy has no room to operate in your life unless you give him some. Unless you give him some. Now, Millions of people are giving the devil lots of room to work. And millions of them are doing it ignorantly, oblivious to what they're doing. One of the greatest successes of the devil is that he has convinced most of the world he doesn't even exist. Hmm? That he doesn't exist. 
And you're never going to resist what doesn't e- exist. You don't resist what doesn't exist. And the enemy, the last thing he wants you to do is to wake up and realize that he's the one causing problems and you start resisting him and shutting him down. So he wants you to to believe and be conformed to the world that the devil and demons and evil spirits and all of this is just myth, fantasy, literature. (laughs) Y'all are quiet. But if you believe the Bible, you have to believe that there is a devil and that there are wrong spirits, bad spirits. Well, if they're around, what are they doing? What's going on? You know, Phyllis very ably a few weeks ago demonstrated with the, uh, remember that? the uh, What was it? The partition and uh, the guys behind it representing a gang trying to get access and get to. Well, that's a perfect picture. Of what's going on. We have. Believers have. The, the right. The authority. The power. The ability. To keep the enemy out. Yes. Out. Of our affairs. And our life. Now. Unbelievers don't. All unbelievers. All men and women unsaved are ruled over by wrong spirits to varying degrees. They may never admit it. They wouldn't acknowledge it. They don't even believe such a thing exists, but it's a fact. Ruled over. Now, as we get into some of these things, you'll find that people get in primarily two ditches talking about the devil and evil spirits. Most never say anything about it. <laughs> huh? And join in with the world pretending they don't exist. And others come right on uh, to the middle of the road and keep going <laughs> over in the ditch on the other side and become obsessed with thinking and talking about the devil. And you know everything's a demon and everything's a devil and Devil's this and devil's that. Devil's in the morning. Devil's at noontime. (laughs) Devil's when the sun goes down. (laughs) Obsessed with it. And one of the ways that you can tell when something is right, something is truth, is its effect, obviously, on the hearer and the believer of it. If you hear teaching on the devil and demons and evil spirits and afterwards you're more afraid of the devil than you were it was bad teaching or you didn't hear it right Hmm? because tell me what the truth will do for you what will the truth do for you when you hear the truth about these things now if you're an unbeliever It might scare you and probably should. And you should run fast as you can and get saved. I'm serious. But if you're a believer, the real truth of the word on this subject will embolden you and give you confidence. So instead of being afraid of the enemy, you'll begin to boldly resist the enemy and shut down his operations in your life. Now, one of the things we talked about with um, the spirit of man, we kept talking about God communicates us, uh, with us through our own spirit. And a big part of that is being aware of my spirit. Well, becoming more aware of your spirit is becoming more aware of spiritual things. And 
there are spirits, not just spirit, but there are spirits. God is spirit. The Holy Spirit is obviously a spirit. Angels are spirits. Human beings are spirits. Well, there's other spirits too. Evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits. They're in the, in the Bible, right? So many people think, you know, they, they read the Bible and whether they say it or not, they, they read about these things and how Jesus, you know, cast out spirits and the early church cast out spirits. And I mean, it's just all through the Word of God, just scores and scores of references about this. And, um, and people read it, but somewhere in their mind, they relegate that to another time and place. And now we've become educated and more developed, and some way or another, we got rid of all the spirits. You know, there may be some dark places in other countries on the other side of the world where some of these spirits are still pretty active, but pretty much, we, we got rid of all that. <laughs> Which is exactly what the devil wants you to believe, right? So he can just operate un checked unchecked <laughs> sit out loud don't give place, don't give place to, the to the devil give no place, give no place to, the devil. to the devil what does that mean there is an enemy he's trying to cause you problems he can't just come in this is one of the most wonderful truths he can't just come in and do whatever he wants to in your life oh thank God I said, oh, thank God. You remember what Peter said? The devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking, huh? Whom he what? May devour. Whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren throughout the world. He obviously may not just come in and do whatever he wants to do. What determines whom he may still kill and destroy from and whom he may not? Well, obviously those that don't even believe he exists, he may devour them. Then they're never going to resist him. They don't even believe he exists. (laughs) Right? And even those that know they're a child of God or know they have the name of Jesus but, but won't use it that'll put up and tolerate things, put up with and tolerate things, he may devour them too because they're not resisting either. And how many know you don't wait till you see a being in a red suit with a tail and horns and a pitchfork <laughs> to start resisting? You don't have to see a spirit to to see that it's working. Hmm? You don't have to see or hear in the spirit realm to realize you can sense things, you can feel things, you can see the result of things. And when you realize that's the enemy, you need to go into resisting mode, standing against. Is that right? Using your authority, not timidly, not hesitantly, but boldly, confidently. Well, then you'd have to know that something's causing a problem and you'd have to know you have authority. And that's what we're doing right now. Is talking about that. The Spirit of God told us, don't you give the enemy any room to work. Don't give him any opportunity to operate. Don't don't let him have that access in your life. Millions are doing it ignorantly. All of us have done some of it. Let's stop it. Let's shut him out. Shut him down. I assure you, you have put up with things you didn't have to put up with. You have tolerated things you didn't have to tolerate. I assure you, you have 
much more authority than you have walked in. Hey, and we're getting stirred up about it. And the enemy's got problems. He's got trouble. Oh, he's got trouble because we're going to shut down his playhouse in our lives. <laughs> Come on, somebody say, I'm shutting it down. I'm, I'm shutting it down. In John 14, 30. <laughs> Man, this is so big. I had 12 pages of notes this morning. And I, sh- I pared it down to eight. And, <laughs> and I've got as far as a third of a page now. So are you going to be able to come back? This is going to, this is going to take some, some doing. Jesus said near the end of his earth life and walk, he said, hereafter I'll not talk much with you for the prince of this world comes. Who's he talking about? 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 calls him the God of this world. If the devil is the prince of this world and the God of this world, that means he's controlling it. Not our God, our Father. And this is where most Christians, you lose them. They're like, God is in control. And that sounds good. But if God is controlling everybody on the planet and everything on the planet, it's a mess. Huh? The cruelty. The death, the disaster, the need. Is that really my good father doing all that? Controlling all that? No, the truth is, right now, God's not controlling this earth. The devil is actually the God of this world. And he is the prince of the power of the air. And he is influencing through men and women all over the globe, affecting his will and purpose, stealing, killing, destruction. He is called the destroyer. And that's who he is. That's what he does. And all of the things that people keep blaming God for is his work. But you can't just stop there. People are letting him do it. People are cooperating with him to do it. Yielding to him to do it. If nobody on the planet would give any place to the enemy, it would be like they didn't exist. If nobody would speak a word inspired by the devil, the devil could not speak in the material world. If nobody would yield a hand or a fist or a trigger finger or anything to the devil, he couldn't kill anybody down here. Can you see this? He has to work through vessels. Somebody has to yield to him or somebody has to give him place. Somebody has to give him room, opportunity to work. Now it's not shocking that unbelievers are going to do this and don't even know what they're doing. Don't even realize. You you see people do things that they said they'd never do. And then they're just baffled. Why did I do that? Well, you you kept yielding to a wrong spirit. Right? Right? It's it's not, shouldn't be shocking to us that unbelievers do these things. And give him all the voice he wants and all the hands he wants. But none of it should come from us. Huh? The church shouldn't lend him one of our voices to say things to hurt people. Shouldn't lend him one of our hands to steal or to hurt or destroy. We belong to the Lord. We're his body. 
His spirit works through us. His spirit speaks through my mouth. His spirit ministers and heals through my hand. Come on, can you say amen? His spirit. I'm, I'm not available to the enemy for anything. But, you, but you'll have to be on your guard because he'll bring thoughts. He'll bring feelings. He'll push you. And if you're not aware of what's going on, you'll say them. You'll act on them. And it's the enemy acting through you, talking through you. Remember Peter? When Jesus was talking about going to the cross, Peter took him aside and rebuked him. Whoa. <laughs> Peter rebuked the Lord. And Jesus wheeled around and said, get behind me, Satan. Well, is Peter Satan? No. But at that moment, what was he doing? Peter's a good guy. He loves the Lord. The Lord loves him. He's a believer that the Lord is the sent one. But at this moment, on this day, he's yielding to wrong stuff. He's yielding to a wrong spirit. No, he's not possessed, but he's yielding to a deceiving spirit. And he's saying things he shouldn't be saying. He's doing things he shouldn't be doing. Yielding, giving place to this bad, wrong influence. And any believer can do this any day. And too many times we have. But we're stopping it. We're shutting it. We're shutting the devil down where our life is concerned. We can't control everybody in the world, but we never have to lend the devil our mouth to speak his words. We never have to yield the devil our hands to hurt somebody. We never have to. We never have to. In Luke 14, Jesus said this at the end of his, what, 33 or so years of life on the earth. He said, uh, the prince of this world comes. This is right before he went to the cross. And notice what he said, verse 30, John 14, 30. He has what? John 14, 30. He has nothing. <laughs> In me. John 14 30. The prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. This is one of the greatest statements you'll ever hear. Why would he say that? Well, the enemy had been trying to get access to him and get him to yield to him his whole life. Do you remember the 40 days and nights in the wilderness where he just subjected them to unrelenting temptation? He's trying to get Jesus to yield to him, to give him place, to act on his temptations, his suggestions. Jesus wouldn't do it, not even one time. Amen. Woo! Oh, yeah. He's my hero. Is he your? He's my hero. He's my, he's my hero. He lived his whole life and never yielded his mouth to the enemy, not one time. Never yielded and acted on the promptings or temptation or deception of wrong spirits. And they were all around about him, just like us. But instead of yielding to them, he cast them out. <laughs> he cast them out right and left. And when they'd speak up, he'd say, shut up and get out. And they did. <laughs> he shut him down right, left, front and back. And he did it as a man. Demonstrating to us how to do it. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. The NIV says it like this, that Jesus said, verse 30, I'll not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. How many can believe that? Did, Je did Jesus act on what we read in Ephesians, don't give place to the devil? He absolutely never gave him any place. That's our example. I said, that's our example to follow. 
Now, I moved too quick. Go back to Ephesians. My word, I'm still not off my text. <laughs> go, go to Ephesians, <laughs> the fourth chapter. Well, that's one good thing about having a church. Yes. Right? Yep. We can come back, come back, come back. Ephesians 4, let me, uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to read this to you from the CEV. The, the, what is that, the complete English version, CEV, verse 23, Ephesians 4, 23. He said, let the Spirit change your way of thinking and make you into a new person. You were created to be like God, so you must please Him and be truly holy. We're part of the same body. Stop lying and start telling each other the truth. And don't get so angry that you sin and don't go to bed angry and don't give the devil a chance. God's word translation says don't give the devil any opportunity to work. He mentions two big areas where people do that. Lying and anger. These are two big ones. If we just stopped these two, we would shut off all kinds of access of the enemy in our life. See, people are pretending these spirits don't exist or they're waiting to see or hear something that's the devil. But it comes in the form of you being tempted to lie. Can you see this? There will be times, there have been times, and there will be times when you are pushed to lie. Feelings of fear will come about telling the truth. Feelings of shame will come. You're too proud. You don't want anybody to know the truth. And you'll be tempted to lie. But if you yield to the temptation to lie, what just happened? You, you opened up a part of your life and allowed the enemy in. Just that access can cause mental difficulty. It can cause physical problems. It can cause any number of things. Because the enemy has access to you. And if he has access to you, what's he going to do? He never comes unless he comes to steal something, kill something, destroy something. He'll kill your liver if he can. He'll kill brain cells if he can. Right? He'll kill your business if he can. Right? He'll kill your relationship, your marriage if he can. But he cannot just come in and still kill and destroy. Amen. If he could, he'd have wiped us all out a long time ago. Yeah. What, what does he have to have? Access. He has to get us to give him access. Give him some place. And two of the big ways that he mentioned here was lying. And what was the other one? Anger. Anger. Oh, man. The Bible said the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. And he didn't say you, couldn't, you could never get angry. What did he say? Be angry, but, but what? Don't act on that rage. Don't act on that anger. Why? If you get, if you get upset and you get mad and instead of resisting that and get a hold of yourself, you yield to it, you act on it, you open yourself up for a wrong spirit influence. That's how people get so mad, they don't know what they're doing. Well, if you don't know what you're doing, who's at the wheel? Huh? And all you got to do is look and see what happened. What happened when you were so mad you didn't know what you were doing? It was nothing good. Somebody got hurt. Can you see that? Somebody died. 
Well, it's obvious. So that's what the enemy, he wants to push you and get you yielding to him in these things until you don't, you don't have to know what you're doing. Until he gets more and more control. More and more access means more and more influence. And these spirits, they, they have no expression in this earth unless somebody yields to them. They want to express. They want to do things. But they can't do anything unless somebody will yield to them. And if somebody will yield to them more and more and more, they can say and do what they want to through human beings. And it's not that we should just think about spirits and be afraid of spirits. Think of it as influences. Influences. There are times that it's just, it's not reasonable for you to be so upset about something. <laughs> and yet, boy, the feeling is there. It just comes like gangbusters. <laughs> huh? It's not, it's not logical for you to be so upset or to be so mad. What's going on? The enemy is not inside you. You're a child of God. He's coming from the outside and pushing and trying to influence you. And, and, and he brings lies and accusations against other people to stir you up into a rage. And if he can get you to act on that, you just open the door and said, come on in. If you start acting on lying and deceiving people, you just open the door and say, here, I'm going to give you a room to stay at my house. And of course, all the while he's there, he's going to harass you and torment you and try to cause problems through other people. Here's the good news. You can kick it out. Anytime you decide to, you can kick it out. Cast it out. Kick it out. Eject. Hmm? And put up the sign. No vacancy. <laughs> we're full up here. Well, who's staying there? Just me and the Holy Ghost, but that's full. I'm full of Him. I'm full up. No room. No vacancy. <laughs> so lying... And anger are two of the big ways that uh, people give place to the enemy. Be on the watch for that. Go to Luke 9, please. I think we'll be able to read our text before we uh, close today. I had two texts. Ephesians was the first one. Luke is the second one. But that's all right. I knew we weren't going to get through all this today. I, I knew that. Luke 9 and 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. Now that word actually is not correct. It's the word, the Greek word is demons. There are not many devils. We, we say that, we use that phrase, but it's not correct. There's one devil and many demons. But now when you say that, most of the world is influenced by Hollywood. And horror movies of these monsters called demons. And nothing could be further from the truth. That's not what they are. That's not what they're like. You got to get rid of the Hollywood junk. Because so much of who was inspiring those scripts was the enemy. And he's always trying to blow himself up. It's to be some monster, and he's trying to scare you all the time. But the truth is, he's been stripped, yes. brought to naught. Yes. He is a defeated foe. Yes. Brother Hagin, my father in the faith, operated in the prophet's ministry. And 
uh, discerning of spirits. One of the gifts of the Spirit operated in his life and ministry uh, a lot. And he mentioned that he saw spirits more than once. And again and again, when he saw them, he said they were small. The ones he saw, monkey-looking beings. He said they weren't monkeys, but they had an appearance kind of like that. And small. Now, the devil will never tell you that. Huh? Hollywood paints this big fire-breathing monster, right? This 20-foot-tall demon. It's all junk, I'm telling you. It's all junk. And he said, I heard him do this in, in person. And, and I, I, he's talked about it. He's, he's going to heaven now. But uh, time and time again, it'd be the same kind of scenario. He said he saw like a, a little monkey-like, imp-like creature. And he said, I command you to leave them. They were trying to oppress somebody from the outside. And said they said, I don't want to go. But I know if you tell me to go, I have to go. He said, I said, go. And he said they'd fall off in the floor and lay there and shake. The devil will never tell you that. Is that scriptural? The Bible said in James, you believe there's, there's a God, you do well. The demons believe and shudder. They do what? Shudder, one translation says. That's exactly what he said he saw. He said, I said, leave them. He said, they, they jumped off and fell in the floor and lay there and shook. And he said, I command you leave this place. He said, they got up and scampered and ran away. Yeah. Well, it has to be something like that because the Bible said, resist the devil and what? And he would loom up over you 20 foot tall and, and growl and scare you. No, no. These are lies these are misrepresentations. They're deceptions of the evil one just trying to get you to be scared of him and do anything except resist him. Yes. Yes. But the truth is, most of these spirits, a lot of these spirits I should say, that's how they are. They're smallish. They're defeated. They're hoping we don't know what's going on. They're hoping we just leave them and let them work. But the moment we rise up in the power of the greater one and the name of Jesus, man, they, they can't even resist. They fall off and shake and run away as in terror. Is this Bible or is this Bible? They shudder and they flee. When they are resisted with the authority of Jesus' name and faith, they shudder, they flee. Come on, say that loud. They shudder. What does shudder mean? <laughs> and what else do they do? <laughs> Why should you be afraid of that? Huh? Why should you be scared of that? You should not be scared of that. You should be emboldened by that. What will the truth do for you? If you hear teaching that scares you, and impresses you with how terrible the devil is. That's wrong teaching. Because the truth will do what for you? It'll make you free. It'll make you free from fear. It'll make you free from confusion. It'll make you free from paralysis. Enable you to be bold. Confident. Act. Huh? What happens, child of God? When you rise up. To put a stop to the enemy's activity. And you resist the devil. What happens? What happens? He shudders. He flees. Is it Bible? Now the devil tried to convince you of something else. But you got to remember. What is it? He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. Everything that comes out of his mouth. It's going to be a lie. Even when he quotes something true, he's not done till he adds a lie to it. So why, why would we believe it? He called the 12 together. He gave them power and authority. 
Now you have to look up the words in the King James to see which is which because a lot of times it will say power when it actually means authority. But here both words are used. Power, that's power, dunamis. Authority, that's the right to use the power, exousia. Both power and authority. Huh? <laughs> With, uh, say, a policeman, for instance. And by the way, we support our police. We support our police. No matter how upset you get about something, you have no right to destroy people's property and, and hurt other folks. And, and defunding the police is a crazy idea. But with the policeman, uh, the badge, the uniform, that's authority. Hmm? They have a right to say and do some things. But without any power to back it up, Lawbreakers are just going to run over it, right? So the 200 pounds of muscle, that's power. The Glock, that's power. You see what I'm saying? Well, what did Jesus give us? He gave us the authority. Is that right? He gave us the badge and the uniform. He gave us the name of Jesus and the right to use it. But without power, that's useless because the devil's a lawbreaker. Did he give us something else? The greater one. Greater than who? Than any, any wrong spirit. The greater one lives inside us. He is the great power of God. And that power backs the authority. He gave them power and authority over what? Over all Demons. Now again, uh, virtually everywhere in the King James New Testament you see the word devils, it should be demons. Over demons and to cure diseases. Power and authority over demons to stop them and cast them out and diseases to get them out and affect healing. Jesus gave this to the twelve and he sent them, in verse 6, they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel, good news, and healing everywhere. How, how are they healing everywhere? They're not the healer. How are they doing it? When the scripture said, go heal the sick, cast out demons, how do you do it? Well, you just act on that authority that God gave you. You give the command, you give the charge, and expect the power, the Holy Spirit, to back it up. Yes. Now, sometimes people say, well, yeah, well, that, you know, that was the, um, uh, the 12, the apostles. They had that kind of power. But when the last apostle died, all that ceased. Well, no, uh, dear, you should have kept reading. Uh, <laughs> in the uh, 10th chapter, after these things, the Lord appointed what? Huh? Seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. And we know he did the same thing for them as he did for the twelve. We're going to see it in just a few verses later. Exactly the same. He authorized them. He gave them authority and power over all demons, and over all disease. Amen. So it was just the 12. Well, now we're already up to what, 82? Yeah. And it's just two chapters in. <laughs> can you see a trend happening here? Can you see something going? And can you see, this is Luke, by the end of the book of Mark, the Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And one of the signs is they shall cast out yep. demons. Yep. Are you a believer? Yes. Well, you couldn't cast them out if you didn't have authority and power to do so. This is not just for preachers. This is not just for people that pray all day long. 
Did you hear me? This is not just for people that can quote half the New Testament. This is for every child of God, just like the 12, just like the 70, just like uh, that the, you see in the, the New Testament in the book of Acts. It wasn't just apostles. Evangelists did this. Prophets did this. Pastors did this. It continued in the days of the early church. It continues to this day. To those that believe it. That they've been, we've been authorized and empowered over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. Not by our might or our power, but by the authority of that name and the power of the Holy Spirit who backs it. Oh, how the devil does not want you to believe this. Oh, he does not want the church to find this out. But too late, too late, too late. We know it. We know it. We're going to keep talking it and believing it and doing it. And other people will find out about it too. Whew. Verse 17, we know he authorized them, the 70. This is not the 12 now. This is the 70. The 70 returned again with joy, saying what? Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. Now hold on, hold on. Are demons just figments of people's imagination? You know, educated people don't believe in this kind of thing. Huh? Huh? So what are they rejoicing over? Huh? They just caught up in some kind of religious confusion? Or did we finally, you know, here in North America, we finally drove out all the demons. Oh, man. And you really, you know, you really just don't hear much about them anymore. Something happened, you know, and they all went away. Praise God. <laughs> no, they're around. In fact, they're all over the place. There's an infestation. I know we don't like to hear that, but we shouldn't let it alarm us and bother us. It was that way long before we got here. If the Lord tarries is coming. It'll be that way after we leave. The thing we must know is what? Don't give them any place, any room to operate in your life. None. Know who you are. Know your authority, know the power, and when you detect the operation of the enemy, stand up at once on the inside and resist it and shut it down, bind it, stop it. You've been authorized. You've been empowered. Do you believe, if you believe that, say amen. amen. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Man, they were, they were quite excited about it. And, and, and he said to them, I beheld Satan. So he must exist. Huh? If he doesn't exist, what did Jesus see? I, I be, Jesus said, I saw him like lightning fall from heaven. Who is Satan? He is the devil, one devil, many demons, many also the, the demons are called evil spirits. Evil is just another word for bad. And that is the big contrast. God is good. Hmm? And the devil is bad or evil. 
we, we don't use that word evil so much in our modern vernacular unless we're using it in a religious sense. And I think we'd be better off using the word bad many times because that's what it is. So if you're talking about evil spirits, what are you really talking about? Bad spirits. Well, what are bad spirits trying to do? Influence human beings to say bad things and do bad things. Come on, can you see this? Bad things. They're bad spirits. And you'll see the Bible mentions lying spirit. It means uh, spirit of infirmity, uh, all these different things, unclean spirit. And you'll find that when people yield to that spirit, if people yield to a lying spirit, what do they wind up doing? Lying. If people yield to an unclean spirit, what do they start doing? They become unclean. They get involved in more and more filth. And whatever spirit it is, people that yield to them take on their characteristics. And people who struggle in areas of sin and bondage, they say, well, you know, God made me this way. No, he did not. God didn't make the devil the devil. He didn't make the devil bad. Hmm? In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, I think it's mentioned some seven times in the first chapter, this was good. And when he made this, it 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 was good. And at the end of the chapter, he looked at everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. Well, where's the devil in that? Where's the devil? Evil spirits. He didn't make them that way. Now, uh, we don't have time today, but I think we'll get into it. The Bible said that Lucifer was created an anointed cherub that covers, and he was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. God didn't make a devil. He made an anointed cherub. And I don't know how long he functioned in that capacity, but at some point... It wasn't enough for him, and he used the wisdom and, and power that God gave him as this being, and he distorted it and twisted it in himself, and iniquity was found in him, and he actually fathered deception. God didn't create lying. The devil did. And so then all those that followed him, same thing happened with them. God didn't create them evil. Same thing with people today. God didn't make you evil. God didn't make you bad. His intent was that good things happen in us and through us. But he did give us a completely free will. So we can yield to bad just as quickly as we can yield to good. And he won't force us not to. But we're foolish if we do. He said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give to you power. This is the word for authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now this is representative of the devil and demons and evil spirits. Satan himself is called the ancient serpent. And you remember he manifested in the garden through a serpent. He's also called a dragon, which is a serpent type being. He's been around a long time. But Jesus said, I give you power to tread on, not run from. People are using their feet for the wrong thing. <laughs> Heard one, one preacher talked about that, uh, you know, I got the devil on the run. Problem is, uh, uh, I'm running and he's running after me. That ain't funny. I said, that's not funny. That's being scripturally ignorant. No. 
We should be the ones putting him on the run. Resist the devil. And he will. Don't forget Shudder. He'll... <laughs> I like that picture, don't you? And that's scripture. The Bible said the demons, when they think about God being the one God, they shudder. <laughs> they shudder. <laughs> it scares them. <laughs> and they flee. He said... I give you power, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Now, that's the word for force. I give you authority over all the force power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, we need to believe this child of God. We need to believe that, said out loud, they can't hurt me. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That means you have an eternal place in the eternal kingdom of God, your name is part of the citizenship of heaven. And the personal family of the father. You're a son, male or female. You're still a son, a son of the living God. And my name is in the Lamb's book of life. And my citizenship, polytonym is the word, is in heaven. That's why I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm passing through. I'm headed somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And there's a bunch of darkness and junk down here, but God did not leave me helpless. He gave me the greater one, and he gave me and you the authority in his name. Did he give the 12? Did he give the 70? Did he give you? Did he give the believer power and authority over all demons, evil spirits, unclean spirits to cast them out and over every sickness and every disease? He mentions them together because it's all the work of the enemy. The Bible said God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The Bible calls everybody, all the sickness that oppressed all the people Jesus healed, satanic oppression. Oppression. Doesn't that paint a picture? From the outside, the enemy is trying to pressure and trying to do stuff. But Jesus was casting them out, shutting them down, driving them out, healing everywhere he went. Boy, he is messing up the devil's playhouse. I and mean, he is, he is just, <laughs> they, they are parting like the wind in front of him. Is that right? <laughs> and he didn't do it and said, don't try this at home. I'm the child of God. He did it. And then he said, he gave the 12, the, didn't he? 12. Yeah. The same authority. By, then he gave the 70, yeah. the same authority. By, then he said, to those that believe, yes. these signs will follow yeah. those that believe. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, lift your hands. Lift your voices. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Just close your eyes, if you would, for a moment. Focus on the Lord. If you don't know the Lord and you haven't given your your life to Him, then you have been and you will be dominated by these spirits of darkness. You're powerless in many ways against them. But when you receive Jesus and you're born again, you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, and the enemy loses his control and rights concerning you 
And you actually become in different ways his master. So friend, don't wait another moment. If you've never done it, do it right now. Pray this prayer with me. Everybody watching online, everybody here, everybody at Sarasota. Confess and say, Father God, I do believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that you sent him for me and for us all. And that he paid the price on the cross for all my sins. And that you have raised him from the dead. And he's alive right now. King of kings. Lord of lords. You've given him a name. Which is above every name. And at that name. Every knee. Must bow. Every tongue must confess. I confess. Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. My Redeemer. I receive eternal life. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive washing and cleansing from every wrong thing by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.